Alrighty, my pupils. Um, so we are going to do light dependent reaction and then we'll do the light independent reaction really quick or the Calvin cycle. Um, so quick little overview here. This is the one that requires light. This is happening in the thylakoids of a chloroplast. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take that light energy, we're going to call them photons, and we're going to produce ATP and NADPH. Um, when that is happening, water is actually splitting so that we can take one of those hydrogens and latch uh, some of that photon energy power to it, um, some electrons uh, from that chlorophyll A, okay? So it's like water's going to split and now we've got something tangible like that hydrogen to deal with. Oxygen also is going to be produced as a byproduct. Okay, so let's um, kind of quickly review this idea of this thing called the photosystem. So this is kind of important for how we gather that energy. Um, so we have photosystem one and photosystem two, <clears throat> and it's actually a little bit backwards. Um, photosystem two actually happens first, and then photosystem one actually happens second. Okay, um, so we have this happening on a thylakoid. Um, in the chloroplast, remember those thylakoids are covered with different pigments, um, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, antenna pigments, okay? Uh, and what's going to happen is this is like a picture of the surface of one of those thylakoids. And so what we've got is we've got photons coming in and they are bouncing around transferring energy from pigment to pigment. It's kind of like them accumulating the energy. OK, um, eventually they're going to bounce around and they're going to hit a primary electron acceptor. And this is where all the actions happen. As soon as it hits that primary electron acceptor, it goes and it shoots up um, the energy and it'll attach it to a hydrogen. OK, so that's kind of like the gist of the photosystems. Now, we have two different photosystems. They are named in the in the way that they were discovered. So photosystem two, although it's called photosystem two, it actually happens first. Um, and the reason that is, is photosystem two has a light that's best at like the 680 range. Um, and so it's more of those antenna pigments necessarily, not um, a lot of the color that we really like, that blue light color. Um, versus photosystem one, which is our big guy, um, he's absorbing light best at the 700 range. Okay, so... Uh, think about it kind of like this. Photosystem 2 is kind of emulating a lot of energy for us. Photosystem 1 is um, doing the majority of the work, but sometimes we need a little help from Photosystem 2. Okay, so the uh, light um, is absorbed by Photosystems 1 and 2. That's happening on a thylakoid on the membrane, and there are electrons flowing through two distinct different um, ways okay so there is non-cyclic photophosphorylation and there is cyclic photophosphorylation and so just a really quick thing remember phosphorylate means just add a p or add a um, phosphate um, when we say photophosphorylate we're using light to add that p or capture that energy um, and so we can do non-cyclic which is going to give us nadph um, and nadph is just an electron carrier um, and electron carriers we love because that's what's moving our energy around, okay? Um, and then ATP, obviously, we know what ATP does. It's at our energy to do cellular work, okay? So we're actually producing some ATP in this so we can actually make some glucose. Now, <clears throat> cyclic photophosphorylation is exactly how it sounds. This is going to happen in a circle or a cyclic manner um, to produce ATP only versus the non-cyclic, which is going to give us the electron carrier and ADPH as well as ATP. Again, photophone, we're just using light to generate that ATP. So we have um, another kind of quick thing of how it actually harvests the light. Um, so we got to keep it, we're shooting to get towards this primary electron acceptor, which is going to shoot the energy up and attach it to probably a hydrogen of some sort, okay? Um, captured in the bonds of ATP. Um, photons bouncing around, building up power on these antenna pigments. Um, when they get to chlorophyll A, we have accumulated the correct amount of energy and wavelength. That chlorophyll A is the one that is responsible for hitting it to that electron transfer, um, that primary electron acceptor.
Okay, so that's like the reaction center. That's like what is happening and like when a lot of stuff goes crazy is because chlorophyll A is giving all the energy to the primary electron acceptor. So let's look really quick um, at cyclic versus non-cyclic. Okay, so in the yellow here, you can see the cyclic version. Um, and what you'll notice is it is only making A. Um, and then you'll also see the non-cyclic is the gray. Okay, so how does this happen? Okay, non-cyclic. Okay, cyclic. Um, if you're going to know, this is not the thing to get super nitpicky about, guys. Um, so don't stress too much about it. Um, but things to keep in mind is that the non-cyclic is actually going for system 2. We're doing these. Um, things called uh, cytochrome complexes, and then we're going to move those over to photosystem one. Uh, we use something called the ETC. The ETC is an electron transport chain. Um, so this is that series of proteins on a membrane that are helping us build up a gradient. Okay, so we talked about the gradient and electrochemical gradient a little bit. We're going to see that now. Okay, again, we're producing ATP and NADPH in this electron flow we've got photosystem one only, okay? And the very first EC, ECT, ETC, but no more, okay? Um, so there's no reduction of NADPH and no release of it. Um, it does produce some ATP um, to be used up uh, the difference needed due to the, the Calvin cycle. So the ATP that we're gonna make here is actually gonna be used in the Calvin cycle and it's just gonna pass back and forth. So, photosystem two, we're taking in photons at the 680 range. We hit that primary electron acceptor, okay? And this is where water splits. So, when water splits, we release oxygen as a byproduct, and we're left with these two hydrogens. These two hydrogens are going to hold on to that energy. Um, so, the primary electron acceptor here is actually the hydrogen. It's going to take that, okay? Now, once it grabs that, energy on that hydrogen we're going to go across the cytochrome complex basically a bunch of proteins helping us move the energy um, and the electron flow is going to be caught inside of atp okay so we're going to catch that energy in the form of atp now how did hydrogens move energy to atp okay here is a picture of that cytochrome complex it's just a ton of um, uh, electrons, okay, um, that are creating hydrogen, okay, remember, our hydrogen here, um, oxygen's being left as a byproduct, but our hydrogen here are actually holding on to that energy, we love, um, little gradients like this and this disequal, um, charge where we've got a lot of, like, a proton gradient built up. So what we're doing is we're creating this proton gradient, and as the photosystems are building up that energy, the electron acceptor sends out, boom, and we are creating this real big gradient of a lot of, a lot of positive charge and a lot of negative charge. Um, that gradient, okay, is going to work its way across the membrane, and then when we're going to hit this very special um, protein. If you're going to know a protein, ATP synthase is the protein to know. Um, he is going to shoot a hydrogen through that essentially strips the hydrogen of its um, energy and it packages that in the form of ATP. Okay, so the bond between the third and second phosphate combined, this is an anabolic build of ATP, and we have made some um, ATP energy because of our disequal charge okay we love energy we love electron carriers because that is making us energy charge equals energy okay so what we'll see here also okay is that NAD, nadph is we're going to take those hydrogens going to stick them on and they're also going to help us carry some uh, energy across so that's where the hydrogens go when they're done okay they hit an nadp and become NADPH. So that's all going on in this um, non-cyclic flow. 
Okay, we go through that electron transport chain. We got, got ourselves some NADPH. We've also made some ATP, okay, through ATP synthase. NADPH is going to how we kind of reduce that, um, and it's going to actually just have that extra hydrogens, and that's where they all end up. So what we'll learn a little bit later is that exact thing is happening in the mitochondria. It's just like the reverse. So we have uh, an electron transport chain. We have an ATP synthase. We're making ATP in the mitochondria as well. We call that chemiosmosis when it's in a mitochondria. So two stages of photosynthesis. We just did the light dependent. Um, and now we're going to hit the light independent. Okay, both are requiring light somehow because even though it says it's the light independent, the Calvin cycle can't happen without the products of the light dependent reaction. So no light, no, no glucose. We've got our big overview of the two light reactions um, and the Calvin cycle. So the light reactions carried out by molecules on the thylakoid membrane convert energy light energy into chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADPH. Uh, H2O is going to split. Those hydrogens are going to go be part of NADPH um, and help us create a proton gradient so that we can store energy in the form of ATP. The oxygen is going to be a byproduct released into the atmosphere. Now, the Calvin cycle is in place in the stroma. Okay, It's going to use ATP and NADPH to convert CO2 into the sugar um, G3P, and we're going to return the ADP, um, those inorganic phosphates, and the NADP plus back to the light reaction. Um, so these are going to pop back, and they're going to help us move things back over to the stroma for the Calvin cycle to take place. So this is a cycle. Of, um, these guys are just going to constantly be pulling energy from the light dependent reaction over the independent reaction, the Calvin cycle. So let's look at the independent reaction. Do not require light directly. However, it does require the products of the light dependent reaction. Take place is the stroma. So this is the jelly-like place in the chloroplast. And it requires ATP and NADPH that was produced in the light dependent reaction. It has three big steps. Carbon fixation, reduction, and regeneration. But the Calvin cycle is an anabolic process, meaning what we're doing is we're taking energy, we're storing it in the form of glucose. Okay, where did we get this energy from? ATP and NADPH from the light dependent reaction. This is all very nitpicky. I'm giving you a heads up. Um, so there's three big layers of this. The first one is carbon fixation. Now we call this the Calvin cycle because it's actually gonna happen twice. Um, we run through it once and we create half of a sugar. We run through it again. We create the other half of the sugar for us to put it together. And now we've got a glucose carbon ring. So the first one is we're going to take three CO2s. Remember, we need six total. Um, and we're going to do carbon fixation. Okay. Carbon fixation requires some ATP energy. Where did we get this ATP energy from? Light reaction. Next. Okay, we're going to do the reduction. In the reduction phase, um, we're going to take those NADPHs. Okay, we're going to put those into the system. And what we're going to get when we're done is this thing called a G3P. So every time I'm taking this ATP, I'm releasing energy into this. I'm phosphorylating this. Um, when I phosphorylate this, I'm really sticking on that phosphate and saying this is where we're going to put the energy. Um, so a G3P is a sugar, um, but it's not a full sugar. Notice it's not the carbon ring yet. It's not all the way pretty. Um, so it's there. It's just not all the way together. Okay. Then third phase, we're going to regenerate um, our CO2 acceptor, which is this really cool um, protein. It's called Robisco, and it is going to like free itself back up. Robisco is going to free itself up so it can go back and do carbon fixation. Again, this is going to happen twice, and when we're done, we've taken out two G3Ps. Those two G3Ps combine to create one glucose molecule. So lots of stuff to go in that goes into creating just a tiny little sugar. Notice these things. One, 
This is a step that requires ATP energy as well as NADPH. We got that.